We are excited to announce our next round of ChatGPT integrations, ServiceNow, and even more so into ServiceNow GRC and some of the other functionalities in ServiceNow. And Roy is mm -hmm. going to take us through some of uh, the use cases. We're going to look at risks, and we are also going to look at IT enterprise demand management and how we can utilize the integration of ChatGPT to actually accelerate the processes. Roy, why don't we start with the risk uh, process and show us how the integration of ChatGPT to risk management uh, looks like in ServiceNow? Sure. So um, I'm here in a ServiceNow instance. I'm going to go to risk statements, uh, which is uh, sort of where you start with your, your risks uh, within ServiceNow. Um, here's some examples of some of the risks that they have in there. And and ServiceNow obviously breaks those down into various different levels with parent risks and children risks. But let's just start here with a, with a fresh new parent risk. Um, any any suggestions, Annie? What risks are we looking at? Why don't we unauthorize changes to my database? Okay. Um, and then here we just need to choose the framework which our organization is using. Uh, I'll just pick NIST 853. This is obviously an IT risk. And uh, what we've added in is this little uh, tick box here, which allows us to queue uh, the, the response on the description and some additional information from ChatGPT. So I'm just going to tick that. And then all I'm going to do is just save this risk. I'm not going to submit it, obviously. We're just going to save it now and then wait for ChatGPT to do its work. Uh, so what's happening is as this record saves, uh, in the background, we're triggering a, a flow that will um, call out send this risk that we just created a little bit of that uh, context about the framework that we're using. We'll also add in some details, sort of broad uh, anonymized uh, details about the organization. All of that just to feed into that prompt that we're gonna get back um, the data from GPT-4. And there you see the results have come back. Uh, we've got a description. We've got some additional information, some laws and regulations, and just scroll up on those. Uh, just and again, what the what the beauty is here is um, this is sort of minimal information that we've passed through, and we get back um, a huge amount of sort of uh, generated uh, text. Uh, certainly better than sort of templates that we could put in, uh, because this is customized and tweaked for our organization. The, the organization sort of prompting data that we added in here was their annual revenue, uh, how many employees they have, and. Uh, GPT used that information to sort of customize and bring back uh, the results as well. And the whole idea, this is just an accelerator. It tells us what's the framework, what's the laws and regs, and you can evaluate and utilize this uh, to properly populate your uh, risk record and all the details and actually start linking this risk to the appropriate controls. And then the other option is uh, we could obviously change the framework to something else. Um, NIST 800-171-R1, for instance, would uh, give us something back from the CMMC uh, cybersecurity maturity models that's uh, very much in use by the Department of Defense at the moment. And there you go. And there we go. Uh, you can clearly see these laws and regulations. Um, what's also great is it'll actually tie, based on the framework, it'll tie those to the different elements of the framework as well. And what's amazing is once we got... Uh... We start utilizing some of the other use cases and actually populate the control description instead of the risk description. We can have the tie back to risk and to uh, other regulations as well. The limitation of the uh, use cases is really how far our imagination can go. So look forward to share some more use cases with you as we progress in putting this together.